the first thing I should point out is that <coughs> because the configuration of the server has changed and because the domain names are now different, the site randomizes which house it chooses every time you visit it. This time it's chosen Cabot House at random, but it could have chosen any other one, and if I were to exit the web browser and go back in, it might choose a different one. That's just for demonstration purposes. Okay, but in 2003, when the house system was operating at Harvard, you would call up, if you lived in Forzheimer House, you would call up your house, correct? That's correct. So your default would be the house you resided in? Yes. Okay. Can you say what you typed into the address? Just now or in yes. 2003? Just now. I typed house system dot think computer dot com. Now we're looking at a user interface that has the label Cabot House. Correct. Is this a uh, true and accurate representation of what the user interface looked like in or about September 19, 2003 for house system? Yes. Right. Uh, it has a sign in registration for email. It has a sign-in link for students, for alumni, and for faculty and staff. I'm sorry, for students, for? Alumni. Um, the sign-in has, a, I see in the upper right-hand corner, a sign-in that gives an email form. Ah, uh, there is a form that asks for an email address and a password. Was that in existence in 2003? Yes. All right, with the email account that you would give your Harvard email account, typically? Typically. What the password would be your FAS password? Before that was changed to avert the dispute over the fast webmail system, yes. All right. Did it always have the three links for students, alumni, faculty, and staff that appear below that? No. All right. When was that feature added? I don't recall. Did it always have the statement, this connection is not secure? No. Do you know when that was added? shortly after the controversy surrounding password issues. Okay. Now, it called up an image of Cabot House at Harvard, correct? Yes. All right. um, was that a feature that existed when this site originally launched? Yes. All right. And there's a trademark house system at the top with what, from my distance, looks like the Harvard possibly shield? Yes, it is the logo for the SEC, actually. Okay. And that's the that w branding existed on house system from the beginning. Yes. Okay. Um, from this site, what would a user? Hmm, what is the earliest site that you were you? What is the earliest time you remember uh, that faculty and staff were permitted to sign in? As I said, I don't recall. Do you have a recollection when the earliest time was that alumni could sign in? I believe that that feature was created simultaneous with the jobs feature. I don't know when the jobs feature went online without referring to documents, but I would guess that it was about the same time. Okay, and earlier this morning you testified that the jobs feature went online sometime after September 19, 2003, but before January 1, 2004. That's correct. Okay. So, so whenever the alumni feature appeared, it was sometime in 2003, after September 19. To the best of my knowledge, yes. Okay. Um, now, in the search, and there's a search box, uh, a search tool on the front. Yes. Is that the search tool that you referred to in your earlier documents that permitted you to use Google? Yes, it is, and I can demonstrate that pretty easily, I think. There are several features within this box to search the HSA unofficial guide. A Google search of Harvard, an Ink to Me search of Harvard, the FAS name directory. I'm sorry, yeah. Ink to Me, which is on the screen. I N K T O M O. The FAS name directory, the FAS email directory, and all of Google. So, were all six of those search uh, options permitted as of September 19, 2003? Yes. Um, 
So a user could search both internally in, within the university and externally. Correct. Uh, if you go down, it says house resources shuttles to. What is that? Cabot House was located in what's known as the Quad, which is far from Harvard Yard for students to walk on foot. And so there were shuttles going back and forth constantly to various locations at Harvard, which are listed here. And this, for some reason, isn't working perfectly, but used to display the latest shuttle times. And that feature existed in or about September 19th. I believe so, yes. All right, and then you have, for all visitors, some information resources about Cabot House. Correct. Uh, and then administration, what is that? I believe that is the feature that let you see the contact information for people who ran that house. <coughs> would that be like a resident advisor? That would be one example of an administrator. I believe this should still work if I click on it. So you can see these are, of course, out of date now, but you can get in touch with these various people because their names are hyperlinked to their email addresses. And you had that for all houses that were available on the system? Correct. Right. Going back, when it says about Cabot House, what type of information is made available? Set a summary of the house's history and unique features about the house as well as a picture for each house as well as a copyright attribution at the bottom though the laptop doesn't seem to be cooperating right now. There we go. Um, it, this says last updated September 24, 2003. That is what it says. So I, in the best of your recollection, this is actually a web page that was last or changed on or about September 24th, 2003. Correct. Okay. Going back, um, and going back yet again, you have rules as for all visitors. This is a page that never actually worked, I believe, but it was intended to be updated at some point in the future. Uh, what was it originally intended to do? I was hoping that the reaction from the house administrators would be less severe and that they'd be willing to actually put useful information up on here, but that never actually happened. And would that be like administrative rules for the university? Sure. Or, uh, in order to keep people out of trouble, I assume? More, uh, more or less. And that was not ever in enabled? No, because it required the cooperation of the university. And the university wouldn't permit you to post that information? <coughs> I don't know if they would have or not, but they did not cooperate. Going back. Uh, going to parties alcohol? That would be the same kind of situation, I believe. Was it originally intended that you would have the ability to notify students of where parties were occurring on campus? Yes, in conjunction with the calendar, which is also on the home page. So it was intended to give the students an opportunity to know of social events and all the parties or alcohol? This was intended to be an adjunct to the rules section because there are a number of rules for each house regarding parties and alcohol. The more direct answer to your question oops, is that under the calendar here, you could submit an event such as a party, although at this point, should I log in? Mm -hmm. Because this is one of those features that requires a login. All right, now, so I understand that we are looking in the calendar feature of our system. Correct. And this was another one of the features that existed even as it launched in August 1st, 2003, correct? Yes, the calendar was always there. So I'm going to log in at this point. You don't need to tell us your email address, but can you generally say how you are logging? I am entering my email address into the email field, and I'm entering a password into the password field, and then I'm clicking go. Okay. 
So this is taking us directly to the calendar page, which I asked for before. Uh, I believe there's a category for parties here under the category field on the calendar page. So if you wanted to post just to your house or to all house system sites that you're having a party and that it may or may not be sponsored by any one of these organizations, then you could do that using this form. Or how did you get the organization? <coughs> I found it somewhere and created an SQL query that entered it into the database. Right. Uh, how many organizations do you have listed? I believe there are 303. Um, and these are all, are they all Harvard organizations or are there some that are non-Harvard related? These are, to the best of my knowledge, all Harvard related organizations. So they would include, say, something like, uh, well, you have a category as youth at Harvard against hand-death violence. That would be a student organization. Yes. And then going back to the, the categories, how did you come up with those two? I thought of them. All right. So these were just your own development of what might be useful information for students. Correct. And they included uh, both academic and and um, uh, and legal. Leader, correct. Correct. There are some social and some academic right, parts. Yeah. Uh, and you broke even the, the social and, and academic parts into individual categories of their own, like party and things. Correct. As I said earlier, part of the intent of house system was to foster a better sense of community within the houses, which I thought was something that Larry Summers had expressed a desire for, and which I saw a need for myself. Were you trying to develop a social community? That's another way of saying what I just said, I believe. Okay. The description field, what was the purpose <coughs> of that? The description field would appear elsewhere on the site as the main heading for that event. So if I were going to throw a party or, for example, put on a recruiting event for a company, uh, I'm not sure if this field would have anything in it for a sponsor, but I might say, Think computer recruiting as a description. And then the date would be the date of the event? That's correct. And you could choose a date from a calendar. And well, the maybe one that hasn't already happened. And then the time would be the time of the event. Correct. So this could be any kind of text entry, such as 12 o'clock. Then you have a Harvard map location. Is that a feature to show where the event is occurring? Yes. You have a number of addresses listed that are prominent within Cambridge. This is every location at Harvard according to the Harvard map. Okay. Was the Harvard map a map that was made available to students through the general site? It is a publicly available website. Okay, but I mean, there's, so there's something that's commonly called the Harvard map by Harvard students, correct? I don't know if most students even knew it existed, but I found it and took advantage of the information it provided. Right. And, and the information it provided is provided by the university itself on its own website, correct? Correct. Uh, going to um, location, what would be, you would type in the same thing on the Harvard, as in the Harvard map, or would you type something else? I was afraid that if you were going to have something off of campus, you might not find it in the Harvard map, and so I provided a text field so that you could type something else, like there was going to be a function for a sorority at a at restaurant in the North End, you could point to that as well, correct? North End of Boston. Correct. Uh, website, what is the website function? If there was a website devoted to that event in particular, then you could type it in. So, if I had, this page doesn't actually exist, but if I had a recruiting page for Harvard students, then I might type that in. And then the memo, would that be a description of the event? Yeah, that would be a more thorough description than the actual description mentioned earlier. Okay, and then it says to upload a poster for your event, choose a JPEG file on your hard drive. Correct, which I don't believe is actually working anymore, but if you did have a poster that you created to advertise the event, one of the advantages of house system over the traditional method of postering was that you could put
put it up digitally, not have to wake up at 6.30 in the morning when it was 32 degrees outside, and you could broadcast it to a much wider audience. Right. Was there any restrictions on what type of poster <coughs> you used to advertise on the None that I enforced in particular. All right. So it could be any JPEG image that was associated with the event. Correct. Right. Uh, did, do you know if students actually use the function of uploading JPEGs for calendar events on or after August 1st, 2003 on the system? They did. All right. Did they do that before the end of 2003? The easiest way to check is for me to show you that section, which I can do if you'd like. Yeah. Before you go, um, I just want to know the poster function, that would be where the JPEG is uploaded? Yes, by, qu uh, by clicking the browse button, you can find a JPEG file on your hard drive. Right. So you'd go to your own local system, upload it, and then it would be uploaded to your system? Yes, where your system means my server. Right. Yeah. Thank you for the It would be uploaded to the server operated out of Hoboken that ran the uh, house system's Correct. website. All right, and then you could save all that information. It would be made available to other students. Correct. I, I believe this is working now, okay. but if I click save, then you should get a strange error message. But once upon a time, it did work. I guess this isn't a valid URL. <laughs> it's, it's smarter than I know. All right, Patty. Check something. You said that you could show us how to upload it, or that there was some place where that permitted the JPEGs uploaded. Yes, yeah, so before this deposition, I uploaded a sample poster to demonstrate that kind of functionality. The laptop is again doing its own thing, I think. Um, if you go back to the home page, you can see that on the calendar, there should now be two events. There's the Facebook deposition, and there's the Think Computer Recruiting event, which I just typed in. And it had an RSVP function. It had an automatic RSVP function, which to my knowledge is something that I invented. Right. Did a student get to see who else had an RSVP? Yes. So by clicking RSVP here, it says you have successfully been added to the RSVP list for this event. It shows you the information I typed in last night for this event. And it also shows you thumbnail of the poster I uploaded, which says this is a JPEG, the kind of poster a Harvard student might make. And then you can see the RSVP list below, which also links to my email address. Now going back outside this? Do you mean going back to the home page? <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. <coughs> Unless there's any other oh. function on that that you wanted to show us. Now that that's the basic gist of the calendar slash RSVP slash poster features, which were all integrated. All right now, there's around campus find summer housing function. This was something that I added toward the end of House Systems life, where a lot of people on the open lists were trying to find summer housing, having a difficult time doing it. And I thought that rather than restricting information by house, which was typical at Harvard, it would make more sense to use a integrated message board where you could post things that everybody could see rather than only some people. Okay. That was added sometime towards the end of house system at Harvard. Yes, it was added right before the summer when people would have been looking for summer housing. So we were prepared to say spring semester 2004? Yes. <coughs> now below it you have a Facebook <laughs> deposition of Ad Club. This is an automatic query based on the fact that I uploaded a poster recently. So the most recent posters to be uploaded would have been displayed on the home page so that they were prominently visible. Would they be displayed to all students using the house system? I believe that depending upon the choice that you made at the outset about where to display the event, yes or no. Okay. Um, now you have general resources to this resource. Correct. Um, before we move on, are you able to pull up any calendar events that were actually created by House System users in 2003? Oops. What is about to happen? Uh, 
I'm referring to the water spilling, not the answer to your question. <laughs> <laughs> I believe I can. Could you do so for us, please? I'll make an attempt. I'm not sure if this is going to work or not. This is one for the Mission Hill After School Program on February 22nd, 2004. This is one for the SEC itself. This is one for the SEC as well. March 5th, 2004. Correct. This is the Social Enterprise Club, which was the other SEC on campus. The second one you showed, I believe, had an October 13th, 2003 date. You go back there. October 17, 2004. Correct. So that would be an example of one that was available in the fall of 2003. Yes. Um, if you could go back to the home page. Now, a function you warned us that is different now is it randomizes the picture of the house. There are two separate randomization events going on. One of them is that when you first go to the site, it randomizes which house it will display to you throughout your session on the site. The randomization of the pictures is a feature which is the same now as it was then. All right, so if I were a member of Cabot House in October of 2003, the fact that it changed from an external view of the house to this view of the internal cathedral actually might have happened then. Not necessarily with the same two pictures, but yes, you, you would have seen a randomized set of pictures for that house in 2003. Okay. Um, going down to general resources again. Um, you have a choose the resource function, for instance, it includes academic calendar and athletics. Correct. All right, what are these resources and, and what were their functions in 2003? Because Harvard is a decentralized organization, many of the websites that students rely on on a daily basis, which are officially run, are in widely dispersed locations that are hard to find. And so this makes it, for students in 2003, it made it easier to find those resources that they might want to use, such as the academic calendar, the dining hall menu, et cetera. And it also included, for instance, a link to the Crimson? The Crimson is one of many resources that Harvard students use on a daily basis. And, and so it would link to the online version of the Crimson? Yes. <coughs> Were all of those general resources available in or about October 1st, 2003? Yes. Returning to the home page. You have for house system members only a, well, going back for all visitors. We never got to newsletter. I was hoping once again that houses would use these resources on a regular basis. I don't think the newsletter ever really took off. Okay. Was the newsletter devoted to house system or some other type of newsletter? I was hoping that the house official newsletters could be distributed in this manner. Okay, but each house at Harvard has its own newsletter that's distributed to its own students, correct? Possibly. All right, some houses have. Yes. And you were hoping that those could be posted online as part of this resource? Yes. Right. Um, <coughs> you go to the top right-hand corner of your, of your um, opening page. What, the home page? Top right hand corner? Yeah, it seemed to change uh, when you logged in. These links became available when you log in, as well as these links at the top. Did those links always become available, or were they added later? Let me strike that, because that doesn't give you a time. You know, about 
October 1st, 2003, what, which of those links existed? In October 2003, had I logged in using this exact same account, all of those links would have existed. All right. Um, I believe. The icons changed to above it. My account, mission control, and sign out. Correct. Now they I appeared. No, I assume sign out existed in 2003. Yes, it's a core feature of the site. And my account existed in 2003. Yes. Mission control, what is that? That's my administrative area to run the site, which no one else would have seen except possibly the one other person I mentioned who might have had administrative access. All right, now your name, Karen Greenspan, new total appeared as a new icon. This table did appear. All right, and so did the icon below it. Correct. Um, were those features that would be presented to students in 2003? Yes. That would include email? Yes. And the packages is a function that we talked about that was never enabled? Yes. Um, and Facenet, is that a later name for Facebook? Universal yes. Tech? So that there's lack of confusion. I understand your documents refer sometimes to the Facebook and the house systems, the houses also have their own Facebooks. Can, for this deposition, can we put this point on and refer to yours as the universal Facebook so there's no confusion in the records? For that, that purpose, yes. Okay. And I understand you testified earlier, it sometimes also was called the Facebook. Correct. Right. But FaceNet, is that the same thing as the universal Facebook? It's related. All right. Where did the universal Facebook, can you show us the universal Facebook function? Yes, I can try to show you as close to what existed in 2003 as possible because that code did change considerably over time. Okay. Can you show us as close as possible and tell us what changes occurred over time functionally? Sure. This may or may not work. So this is a pretty decent representation of what the original Facebook looked like. You can see there are three across cells for people's information. Sometimes photographs would not upload correctly, and so you'd get this corrupt photograph message. Some people chose not to upload a photograph. This is actually just a demo account but this is an actual student who did not have a photograph or type in any valid information possibly. As I said, there were privacy concerns. And there's... Could you stop and go back up slightly? See uh, Lauren Broughton? Yes. All right. Uh, we were trying to just... Uh, earlier I was asking what additional information the students could upload to include with their photos. Mm -hmm. And recall you said it, you did think address could be included? Yes. All right, but it looks like the addresses that are contemplated would be the student address, or could it also include their hometown? I don't believe there was a hometown field. But there was an address field? Yes, for their address on campus. All right, and there was also a class field. Correct. And we talked about if you could list your major, it appears that you can. Yes. And Ms. Brown has an engineering sciences listed. Uh, and you said that phone numbers were permitted. And Ms. Brown has a, an example, correct? Yes. And next to her, Alton Buland has a mobile telephone permitted. Correct. And then her email account is listed, including her Harvard email account. Correct. Now, there's a list, there's an indication there for future plans. Uh, was that a field that any student could always fill in? Yes, but it was not required. All right, but it, was it there from the beginning? Yes. All right, because several of the students on the page are just showing us now have future plans. It was on the sign-up page, as I recall, from the beginning. All right, and below Ms. Broughton, Rodika Muzescu has her <coughs> AOL instant message address also made available. Correct. And that, that was, again, a field that was optional for any student? 
Yes. All right, and then below Miss Broughton, you have a quote. Uh, if you are single, there is always one thing you should take out with you on a Saturday night, your friends, Carrie Bradshaw. You see that? Yes. All right. Uh, did, was the quote field again a, a, an available field made available to every student? Yes. All right. Uh, was it character limited? Not to my knowledge. Okay. Well, let me clarify that. It wasn't character limited by anything that I wrote into the code. The database itself may have limited it to a certain number of characters. Okay. But And as is evident from these photos, and as you said earlier, the students were encouraged to upload photos other than their official Facebook photo, correct? Correct. All right. um, you were going down. I didn't mean to stop you. I just wanted to Ms. Broughton had some exemplary fields we hadn't discussed earlier. So. Okay. So continuing down, you can see that there were several people who signed up for the Facebook. Um, what Do you know approximately when this snapshot was taken? This isn't a snapshot. So this is being read from the database in real time. It is consistent with the database as of as I said, May 2004, just about using the same formatting that existed in May 2003, uh, I'm sorry, in October 2003. There is one exception which I'd like to point out, which is that at the top, this is missing because this Facebook key is no longer in existence in part of the code. And also, there's no header for the same reason. And I believe that the header that would have shown up there at the time is this. Well, not that. Well, I'm not sure where it is, but there was a Facebook graphic there. Um, can we go off the record once? Can we go off the record once? Off the record and. 153? Yeah, I think I had made a promise that I In 2003, below Cabot House, a user would see Universal Facebook as a title, and then you would see that Facebook, correct? Currently, it says limit to none, so right now it's not restricting which Facebook you see, but you would see the Facebook for effectively all houses and Harvard Yard. Wait, could, for, could you, for example, show it? Currently, you see all houses, correct? Correct. If you put on, for instance, Borzheimer, would that be a, one of the houses that you could call it? Yes, it, it again may or may not work now, but that was the idea. All right. and, it and it did work then. All right. Does it appear to work now? I don't think so, because actually the uh, domain name, as I mentioned, no longer exists. Um, two questions. When you signed in initially into the, into the web page <coughs> and you enter, entered an email address, could it be any email address that you registered with? No. All right. So if I had an AOL address, I wouldn't be able to use that to register? Correct. Was it effectively limited to harvard.edu addresses? Yes. Now, when you clicked on, we, we saw someone who had listed her AIM in instant message account. Um, if you clicked on that, what would you receive? First, let me clarify my last answer. Yes, for students. Alumni and faculty were treated differently. Right. And in what way could alumni and faculty log in? Alumni needed a post.harvard.edu address, but not necessarily a fas.harvard.edu address. All right, and that's because Harvard's email server had set up different email fields for har alumni and students, correct? Yes. But they are both ultimately harvard.edu addresses. Yes. Faculty, I believe, could use any address so long as we could verify that they were actually faculty. So if I were a professor of history and you verified that I, in fact, was using the system, I could use AOL in that unique system, in that unique context. 
I'm not exactly sure. We wrote some sort of algorithm to verify identity, but that is possibly a true statement. Was verification typically done just because by somebody on Harvard SEC actually knew the professor and knew that the address was accurate? That may have been the case sometimes. We didn't have a ton of professor participation, so I don't think it came up that often. Okay. Well, now, again, I, I was asking, if you clicked on somebody's, for instance, AOL instant message address or account name, what would happen? If you look at the hyperlink, which I can't point to with the mouse without actually losing it on the bottom of the screen, it says AIM colon go IM question mark screen name equals the user's screen name ampersand message equals hi I found you on house system are you there so effectively what that would do is bring up a window in AOL instant messenger that would send that person a message saying hi I found you on house system are you there as soon as they pressed enter did you have that uh, capacity for other instant message services like Yahoo? No. All right. Was it limited strictly to AOL? Yes. Um, in this case, you're, are you familiar with an individual named Cameron Winklevoss? In the context of this case, yes. Are you familiar with someone named Tyler Winklevoss? Once again, in the context of this case, yes. Are you familiar with someone named Vivian Narendra? Under the same limited scope, yes. Um, are you, when you were at Harvard, were you ever familiar with a website called Harvard Connection? Not by that name, no. Were you ever familiar with a website called ConnectU? Yes. www.connectu.com? Yes. Right. When did you first become familiar with ConnectU.com? May 2004. Okay. That on or about the time it launched? Yes. What similarities between your universal Facebook and the Connect You website as it launched in May 2004 are you aware of? The kind of like that you see today? Several. All right. Can you show us some of those similarities? Okay. Without accessing ConnectU's website, not easily. Uh, can you just do some generic ones you're aware of off the top of your head? Off the top of my head, I was aware of ConnectU as having a user profile which had a photograph of a person on the left and information about that person on the right. I can't say for certain that that's a similarity between House System and ConnectU or between the Harvard formatted Facebooks and ConnectU, but either way it is a similarity. I was also aware of ConnectU launching at some point a textbook exchange portion of their site. And within that portion of the site, I did notice that the order of the fields for data input for textbooks was exactly the same as the order of the fields I had created for House System. Uh, is that textbook site that you're referring to called Jungle? I believe that is what it was called. And which, which you, what, what about it again? I'm sorry. When you say within the portion of the site you notice that the order of the fields for the data input was exactly the same when, when you say order of the fields, what are you referring to? This is going into a feature I have not yet demonstrated to you on House System, but there was a portion called Student Exchange which let you trade books, book requests, items, music, movies, and rides. And you can see these are some of the books I typed in. There's some errors because of the changes in software since 2003, but you get the general idea. And when you went to add a book listing, it asked you for certain pieces of information about that book. And so far as I could tell at the time, 
or at least I have this recollection of thinking that the order in which these fields were asked for was exactly the same on both sites. So that would be a title, author, ISBN number for the publication, the edition, of course. Uh, I can't see the recursive those are that marking. Marking, as in, were there highlights in the book or okay. things that were crossed out? Overall condition, price, sold, not sold, and then and then. Correct. I don't know if Connect you had all of these fields or some of them, but I remember thinking that it did look similar. Um, and this was the exchange program that was mentioned that been in the August 1st, 2003 email that announced how this was correct. Correct. And this all wasn't just limited to books it, in your emails, it also included DVDs, for instance. Correct. Okay. There was a movies section. Right. And movies could be either DVD or even VHS, I assume. DVD. Yes, and in fact, <laughs> it said DVD or VHS. could list the title format value and, and do sort of like a Craigslist type function? Yes. Uh, what's rides? As I mentioned earlier, if you wanted to go, for example, to Barcelona, you could say that, oh, it did not work particularly well. You could say where you're going from, where you're going to, when it was a round trip, and some information about that trip. Um, at just a high level, in, in, what other features of house system have we not seen that you have prepared to demonstrate this factor? Well, you haven't seen critical mass, the message board, jobs or posters, so you basically haven't seen most of it. Okay, can you show us critical mass? This is the course review portion, which let you view the top 10 and bottom 10 courses at Harvard according to students. You could make lists of your favorite courses, your least favorite courses, which was called the blacklist, and see a general combined list in each case, and you could see a randomly selected course evaluation from a student. One of the most prominent features was the shopping list, where you could add courses that you were interested in taking, which were in turn linked to the favorite and blacklist entries, as well as the books for those courses, which you could buy from people at Harvard. And you could add up to 20 courses to this list if you were truly insane and wanted to take that many at once. And when you were done, you could click on view your schedule. And it would make a calendar for your week that highlighted the courses that conflicted with each other and the courses that were non-conflicting, as it says in the key. And if it had courses that had yet to be scheduled by Harvard, they showed up up here and to be determined. And as you asked earlier about them being interactive, you could click on a course to see more information about that course. Now you said this was similar to course math? I believe so. Uh, what were the similarities that you would call? From a general database standpoint, it seemed like you'd require basically the same information to make both products. And that's because you need to have, you know what courses the students were going to be taking. Among other things, yes. Any other similarities? As I said earlier, I don't recall a course match. I don't think I spent a long time looking at it, but it did seem similar. Um, going back to my question about Harvard Connection, in addition to the population of fields in your universal Facebook and the user interface for the student text exchange, what other similarities, if any, can you recall? I don't recall any other similarities that stood out to me at the time. Do you have any others that stand out to you now? I 
I think anything that I would cons consider similar now, in addition to what I recalled at the time, is probably influenced by media coverage surrounding this case, and so I wouldn't say that I do. At the time that Konecki launched, did you recall any significant differences between that side of your own? There were significant differences in the visual appearance of the site. For example, the homepage was all black. Connected homepage was all black. Yes, although the trailer page for the SEC was also all black, but that wasn't the homepage of the site. Uh, Connect you also seem to be going for a different target audience almost is it, well maybe not a different target audience but it seems to have a completely different purpose my site was designed to be useful to people and my frankly my impression of connect you site in may when it launched was that it was a copy of facebook because i had known facebook as in mark zuckerberg's creation since february when it launched and i only found out about connect you afterward I don't know if that is factual belief or not, but that was my first impression. Um, were you familiar? Well, go, we'll go back to it, but for now, um, you also said that you wanted to show us the job site. The jobs portion was fairly straightforward. I could, as an administrator, list job postings for my own company and, and see other job listings that existed, and students could upload their resumes, and I could click on any of them and see them. And uh, this, how this particular portion of House System looked or existed in or about the time the job function launched in 2003? Yes. Um, you mentioned at least two other sites that we haven't seen yet. Yes. I have to hold on to the computer again. The poster section gave you an easy view of all the posters that had been uploaded. So the poster function you showed us earlier not only could be displayed on the home page, but it would also be displayed here. Correct. If you wanted to see posters of other events on campus all at once, you could just go here and click on a poster to find out more about it. And it was often the exact same poster you'd see outside because people would just print out these images and put them on bulletin boards. Right. In fact, you just called up an, an example that existed in December 2nd, 2003. Correct. Yeah. Um, I don't believe we've seen the message board. I mentioned earlier that there were both academic and social things on the message board. Academics was the most popular of them all. 25 messages can be considered popular. There were also references to television shows, multiple places. And uh, when you clicked on a message board, you could find a threaded view with both anonymous posts and actual people's names that gave you more information about whatever they wanted to talk about. So how could you go back to the last function? This message? It's, it's a standard message bullet format. Yes, yeah, so you can reply to messages, type your own, and, and create a post. And create a new thread. Correct. So. Um, were there, again, you mentioned another section we haven't seen yet? Well, FaceNet was the version of Universal Facebook I created after the Facebook.com launched on February 4th, 2004. Right. Now, prior to the launch of Facebook.com on February 4th, 2004, did you have any invite friends function? No. Right. 
that was a function that you created after Facebook? Correct. There were a number of features I created after the launch of Facebook to compete in what I thought was a healthy manner with Mark Zuckerberg's project. And I deliberately created several new features that Mark's site did not yet have. Can you give me an overview of those features that Mark's site did not yet have? One of them was the ability to say how you met somebody instead of just listing them as your friend. Here you could say the strength and where you met, although there were limited choices, you still had that ability. And then when you were ready to confirm them, you could highlight their rows and hit confirm or delete as you saw fit. When was that feature added? Early March 2004. Other features that you're thinking of that you thought were advantageous because they were absent from Mark's site as of February 2004? We had a birthday reminder system. The best evidence I have of that, since it's not apparent from the front end of the site, is that in the mission control section for myself, there was an automated time-based task link for birthday reminder system. And I'm not exactly sure what will happen. I don't want to end up emailing a lot of people. I don't mean to. So that was there, which Mark did not have. Anything else? We had the ability to draw your network in PDF format. This does not work now, but you could see a visual representation of people you knew in a web style using software from AT&T. And though Mark later did that, he did not have that at the time, and he did it a different way, which was less advantageous. And we had the photo album, which did not exist on Mark's site. And then once you clicked on a particular person, you could see right on their profile specific sections for other parts of the site, such as critical mass and books they'd listed on student exchange. So those were most, I think, but not necessarily all of the features that I put in right away. When did you add the birthday feature? I don't recall exactly. It was after February 4, 2004, wasn't it? Yes. February 4, 2004. After February 4, and probably before March 31. And when did you add the network feature? Did you draw your own network feature? As soon as I launched Facenet. I don't recall the exact date for that either. But the launch of Facenet occurred after February 4, 2004? Yes. When did you add the photo album feature? I believe in the fall of 2003. So the photo album feature existed before the launch of Facebook? Correct. Can you show us that again? Here's an example photograph of my friends. And it's not? Maybe. Is there a second ago? And where would this be posted if you were a registered user in October of 2003? Where would this be posted? Yeah. Where would the photo albums exist? I mean, how would a student know where to find any particular photo album? The intent was for them to click on the link on their respective site that simply said photo album. There wasn't much of a search interface. What I guess I'm getting at is if you lived in Cabot House, and let's say both of us lived in Cabot House, if I uploaded one set of photos at noon and then you uploaded another set of photos at 5 p.m., would they all be shown together as part of Cabot House's photo album? Yes. All right. And were they then available to be reviewed by somebody at, say, Formizer House? Yes, somebody in Fort Timer could have gone and looked at them. But it wouldn't say that 
the noon photos were uploaded by Monty Cooper and the 5 p.m. ones were uploaded by Aaron Greenspan, it would be all put together under Cabot House. Uh, I don't exactly remember how it worked at the time, but I think many of the features on here I did stamp with people's names, so I would have expected that to work the same way. Was there a text feature in which you could make any comments about the photos? I don't recall. I seem to remember putting in a memo field, but I don't know exactly. Okay. Um, do you know when that occurred? If you, or even if it did occur? I don't recall. You were in the midst of going to show some features of FaceNet, or the universe of Facebook. I didn't mean to cut you off or anything. Did we see everything? The one part you have not seen is the way that you would edit your profile, which is part of the My Account section. Okay, can you show us that? This is the FaceNet profile section of my account, which is also linked to at the top of the screen. And as you can see, there are fields for a quote, favorite books, favorite movies, a random fact, and favorite email closing. And you can then upload a photograph over here and determine privacy settings for each piece of information here. All right. Um, now, were each of these, each of these, um, options made available before January 1st, 2004? Some of them were, some of them were not. Can you tell me which ones, to the best of your recollection, were available before January 1st, 2004? I believe the quote was available, and I believe some of the privacy settings were available. Also, I've just noticed that one of the things I must have added after the launch of Facebook was the ability to tie it to multiple IM networks, not just AOL and Instant Messenger. Right, and that's because ICQ and MSN are also messaging systems, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, but in all other respects, do all the fields look like those that existed as of the original launch of Universal Facebook? To me, they do. Right. Going back up, favorite email quote, did that exist before January 4th, January 1st, 2000? I don't believe so. Uh, do you know when you added it? It must have been very close to February, early February of 04, or even there's a possibility I added that particular one in late January of 03 because I remember the precise person who suggested it and thought it would be a funny thing to have in the site. Right, who's the precise person suggested? Brad Rosen. And is he a friend? Yes. Is he a member of Harvard SEC? No, he was a member of House System, however. Okay. And you have a, a specific recollection of his making the recommendation for its inclusion? Yes. And it occurred before February 4, 2004? As I said, it may have, but it was definitely around that time frame. Okay. Random fact, do you know when you added that? I believe that would have been in included in March of 2004. Uh, favorite movies? I believe the same is the case for favorite movies and favorite books. Okay, the quote existed from the beginning. Yes. Um, if we go back, you had a check connections, or you had something called connections. There are two links. All right. um, when was the connections feature, the, the features underneath connection? Added? After February 4th, 2004. All right. Were those amongst the features you added to be competitive with Facebook? Yes. Okay. Um, are there any other features of House System that you haven't had a chance to show us that you believe would be useful for us to see as you sit here today? It's hard for me to predict relevance to your case, but I can show you two additional features that were respectively not <coughs> used very much, or if, if at all, and were in the middle of being developed. One of them was, again, 
assuming cooperation from the university, an alarm system that could reach a lot of students simultaneously if there were some sort of safety problem. Harvard had had a lot of safety related issues during the time I was there with people being assaulted on the street and so I thought rather than using the open lists which were often inefficient and didn't reach the whole university that administrators could optionally turn on this bar at the top to reach many students that never actually happened but it was easy to program and another feature I was working on was something I called organizations which was a way for student groups to centralize a message board, document <coughs> uploads, photos, pretty much everything that a student group would want to talk about in one place. I don't know that this ever really worked very well, but you can see I started making calendars and message board and posters and things of that nature. I saw a function search emails. Like, search email addresses. On FaceNet, there is an ability to search for people by name or email. So when did that get added? After February 4th, 2004, and before March 31st. Okay, is that because that feature existed in Facebook when it launched in February 4th, 2004? In part, yes. Uh, and invite friends, when did you add that feature? During the same time frame. Right, and again, was that a, a response to the fact that a similar feature existed in Facebook when it launched? No, because I don't believe a similar feature did exist in Facebook when it launched. Well, did Facebook have the ability to identify friends when it launched? Yes. All right. Um, and did Facebook have a function called Pope? To my knowledge, yes. Okay. And did Pope allow other people with, with similar interests to recognize that you might want to say hello or something to them cybernetic or in a social context? My understanding was that it was a joke feature that had no practical purpose and could not be used with people not on the system, which is different than invite friends, which was designed to be a way to reach out to people who were not yet a member. Okay. Well, on Facebook, though, you could, you could list your friends, correct, as of February 1st, 2004. Correct. And you could add new friends. That was a function of the site as of that day, correct? Correct. And you could let people know that you wanted to invite them as friends, correct? No. You could not let people not on the system know that, to the best of my knowledge. All right. So your recollection is that feature did not exist? Correct. My recollection is that people signed up for Facebook for two reasons, word of mouth and the Crimson. Okay. Did you agree at some point in time Facebook added a feature that allowed you to let other friends, or other individuals using the site know that you'd like them to be a member of your friend list? I believe that happened several years later, but I don't remember. I, I don't know the exact date okay. when it did. So to the best of your recollection, your invitation system existed before Facebook? To the best of my knowledge, yes. Okay. Uh, I think we can go back to the video again. <laughs>